Hi everyone, it's Coach Fred here and today we're going to be um, classifying, sketching, and just exploring more on uh, polynomial functions. In order to do that, we need to know what a polynomial, when we look at it, whether um, what form it's in, what degree it has, what its constant is, what its leading coefficient is. So we're going to look at a couple examples, okay? So polynomials can be classified by the number of terms they have and the degrees they have. For example, this first one, we would call this a binomial. Now it's a degree four. It does actually have a name, so we would call this a quartic function. Okay, so those are the two ways we can um, we can classify it. But we also want to be able to look at some information about it. So we're going to want to know the leading coefficient, which is the number in front of the leading term. The leading term is always the highest exponent because we write them in order from least to greatest. So in this case, the leading coefficient would be negative two. The degree. In standard form, this is standard form because there's no parentheses, the degree is the highest exponent, so this would be degree 4. And the constant term, so the one that isn't changing, no matter what x is, in this case would be 6. All right, so that's a way to classify it. We can also ask you to classify polynomials when they're in other forms, such as factored form. So we've investigated factored form with quadratics. This one actually happens to be a quadratic. How do I know that? Well, because if I multiply this out, I'm going to get a quadratic function. Two terms here. So another way to tell um, its degree is to consider that each uh, x-intercept or each factor has a degree. And if it's not listed, that degree would be hidden. It would be 1. So if I add the degrees, um, it will tell me the, the highest degree of the, of the polynomial. So this would be a de degree 2 polynomial. Again, if I were going to classify it, I want to classify it always in standard form. So I have to actually recognize this will give me a trinomial. And it will be quadratic. Okay, so let's talk about the leading coefficient. The leading coefficient is going to get, um, is going to be thinking about this. I'd have to multiply these, those two, which is going to give me 2x squared. And then I'd have a negative that would get distributed through. So my leading coefficient, I actually have to do a little digging and look at it, would be negative 2. All right. My constant term would always be my last term. So it would be the constants multiplied. So in this case, I have negative 3, which was a degree 1, and 4 was a degree 1. So this would end up giving me a constant of negative 12. All right, I'd love for you to press pause and for you to check your try 2, 3, and 5. Let's see what we come up with. All right, so you're back. You've tried these. Hopefully you came up with um, the same answers for 2 and 3. 5 might have given you a little trouble. So first of all, once we get past a trinomial, we're going to call them all polynomials. So that's actually good for you to know. Um, this would be a quartic because if I have a degree 1 here and a degree 1 here and a degree 2 here, that's going to add up to 4. So my degree is 4, so it would be a quartic polynomial. The constant is probably maybe have thrown you. You have to remember that there were two factors of x minus 2 here. So this is really x minus 2 and x minus 2. So I'm going to multiply all of the constant terms if I were to multiply that out, so it would be 3 times negative 1 times negative 2 times negative 2, which would give me a negative 12. Okay. All right. So then let's look at quickly sketching. When you sketch a polynomial, they're easier to sketch when they're in factored form. So I gave you one in factored form. I always identify my degree. This would be degree 3. My leading coefficient looks like it would be negative 1. And my constant would look like it's going to be negative 12. Um, okay, so why is that important? Well, the constant ends up being my y-intercept because if I let x be 0, all of the x's are going to go away and that constant term is going to end up being my y-intercept. So in this case, and we could test it out, if I plug in 0 to get my y-intercept, I'm going to get, um, let's see. 2 squared, which is 4, 0 minus 3, um, which is 3. Oh, and I forgot this negative. So that negative would have gotten multiplied. So that actually, my constant is going to be positive 12. All right, so this would be negative times negative 3, which is 4, which would give me 12. So again, that constant term is going to end up being your y-intercept, which is really just nice to know. Okay, so I know I have a y-intercept of 12. I'll put it right here. 
okay? And my x-intercepts, I set my factors equal to zero. Okay, so now I've got a factor with a degree of one at three. So I'm gonna plot that, and then one at negative two. Now in class today, we actually investigated um, what happens at these roots, and you might have set, you might remember that when it's degree one, it's going to go through it at that root, kind of like a line. But when it was agreed degree two, it was like a quadratic. And we know that when we have a binomial square, we know that that um, is going to give me a polynomial that whose vertex is right on the x-axis, and that's exactly what's going to happen here. But if I wasn't sure about that, all I have to do is make a quick table for myself and plot points to the left and right. So for example, if I wanted to see what was happening on the left of negative two, I could plug in negative three. If I plug in negative three, I would get, let's see, I'll do the work down here, negative, negative six, negative three plus two is negative one squared. So that's gonna give me one and then positive six, so I would get six. So negative three, six is gonna be somewhere about here. So I can see that my graph is coming down like this, right? It's because it's positive. Now I'm going to get to that negative two and I'm going to turn around. Why? Because we know that it's a vertex. It's going to kind of, I call it a bounce. It's going to bounce there and then it's going to go up through 12. Now we know it's going to go through at three. And so my graph is going to go like that. Now, could it be going up could it be going up like this and then down sure it could be but for now it's just a sketch of the graph and we're going to learn about those different things that happen now i also want to tell you you could certainly plot other points like you could have plotted the point one to see what actually happened where is the point so if i plug in one i'm going to get negative times one minus three is negative two one plus two is three three squared is nine nine times two is 18, so it actually is going up at one. So it's going up like that, and then, da then down. So you can see, now remember, I wanna make sure that it's a nice smooth curve, not any points, so it's gonna be something like that. Again, we're gonna get really good at these right now, we're just sketching. Number two, you wanna be really careful because it's not in factored form and it really is much easier to do these in factored form. It's not like quadratic form where I can do negative b over 2a. So I see that it's got a common factor of 2x, which is gonna leave me with x squared minus 2x, um, what is that, minus 15? All right, I'm gonna factor some more, so g of x. Now, I know it's a degree three. I know the leading coefficient is two and the constant is zero. So I know my y-intercept is zero. So this is gonna give me x minus five and x plus three. All right, so my y-intercept I already have. It's my constant, which is zero, zero. I know that I'm gonna have an, a, 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 a zero or an x-intercept at x equals zero at x equals five and at x equals negative three. So those are my x-intercepts based on the factors. They're all of degree one. Um, so I'm gonna get those plotted. So one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three. Oh, so I have three x-intercepts. That makes sense. Okay, so I wanna see what's happening to the left of the graph. So again, I could, pl I could plug in a point. So I'm gonna plug in say negative four so um, negative four would give me negative eight. Um, negative four minus five is negative nine, and negative four plus three is negative one. So that's this huge number, right? That's se negative 72. Does that look about right? Negative and negative is gonna give me positive 72, 72 minus one. So it's actually gonna be a, pos uh, a positive number or a negative number negative number, so it's gonna be down here. It's gonna be below it. All right, it's gonna go through it. It's gonna turn around, right, to go back through that zero, can't go. So it's gonna go like that, and then I know it's gotta go through that last zero, and so it's gotta go like that. Again, I could find how high it goes up here and how low it goes down here just by plotting points. 
Again, if I do that, I have an expectation that you guys would make a table to kind of show me the points. You could also use your calculator to help. All right, hopefully that gave you a little insight. I want you to move on to the second video, which is gonna have us explore these more using Desmos, okay? All right.